Now let's go ahead and move on and start considering uh, the concavity of the function and whether there are any points of inflection. Now as we do this, uh, we will need the second derivative of the function. And so we will find the second derivative of the function based on what we found for the first derivative. So from our set first derivative, our second derivative becomes f double prime of x, derivative of the numerator times the denominator, minus derivative of the denominator times the numerator, all over denominator squared. Now, simplifying the numerator, we get 2x squared plus 1 minus 4x squared, all over x squared plus 1 squared, which then gives us um, 2x squared minus 4x squared gives us a minus 2x squared plus 1 over the quantity x squared plus 1 squared. Now we consider finding the critical points for this second derivative. The first source would be the second derivative is equal to 0 which would mean negative 2x squared plus 1 over the quantity x squared plus 1 squared equals 0. <clears throat> Multiplying both sides of that equation by the quantity x squared plus 1 squared gives us negative 2x squared plus 1 equals 0. Um, adding negative 2x squared to both sides of the equation giving us 1 equals 2x squared, and then dividing by 2, we get 1 half equals x squared. Then if we take the square root of both sides of this equation, we end up with x equals plus or minus the square root of 1 half. So we have two critical points from the source of setting the second derivative equal to 0. The second source is f double prime does not exist. Notice that our denominator is basically our previous denominator just squared, and so uh, our denominator still, uh, there are no x values that would cause the second derivative to be undefined or to not exist. So at this point we have two critical numbers for our second derivative. So we're going to go ahead and test those. Since there are two critical numbers, this will divide our x-axis into three intervals. We will have from negative infinity to positive, or I'm sorry, to negative square root of one half, from negative square root of one half, to positive square root of one half, and then from positive square root of one half on to infinity. We'll go ahead and choose a value from each one of those intervals. In the first interval, let's go ahead and test negative one. That's a nice convenient value uh, between the two endpoints of the interval. So f double prime at negative one equals negative 2 times negative 1 squared plus 1 over the quantity x negative 1 squared plus 1 squared. Notice our denominator will always be positive. And looking at our numerator, we see that we have uh, ne it's basically negative 2 plus 1, so my numerator is negative. A negative over a positive will make uh, this value negative. So we know on this first interval that our second derivative is negative. Now let's choose a value in our second interval. 0 is a nice convenient value between those two endpoints. So f double prime at 0 is negative 2 times 0 squared plus 1 
over the quantity 0 squared plus 1 squared. Our denominator will remain positive. Notice that our numerator, this first term, will be 0 plus 1, so that's a positive value. So we have a positive number divided by a positive number. That means our second derivative is positive. Choosing a representative value in our third interval, let's go ahead and choose a nice and convenient number like 1. And we have negative 2 times 1 squared plus 1 all over the quantity 1 squared plus 1 squared. Again, my denominator will always be positive. And my numerator, I've got negative 2 plus 1. Negative 2 is um, greater in magnitude, making this sum a negative value. So we know that that's going to be negative. So our uh, second derivative is negative on that third interval. So now we need to interpret our information here. On this first interval, the second derivative is negative. So that means that our function is concave down. On our second interval, the second derivative is positive. So that means that our function is concave up. And then in our third interval, again, our function will be concave down. So summarizing the concavity of our function, we can say that the, the function is concave up on the interval from negative square root of 1 half to positive square root of 1 half. We can say that the function is concave down on the interval from negative infinity to negative square root of 1 half union the interval from square root of 1 half to positive infinity. So that takes care of um, the concavity of the function. The last thing we need to consider are points of inflection. Now recall we had um, two uh, critical points, one here at x equals negative square root of 1 half, and the other one at x equals positive square root of 1 half. Note that both of those values of x were in the domain of the original function, so they have the potential to be a point of inflection. Also note that uh, for both of these uh, critical points, there is a change in concav uh, concavity from negative to positive for the negative square root of 1 half, and then from positive to negative for the positive square root of 1 half. So that means that both of those values of x are points of inflection. So all we need to do is find the corresponding y values or output values for those x values. Now recall that our original function was the natural log of x squared plus 1. So f at negative square root of 1 half is equal to the natural log of negative square root of 1 half squared plus 1. So that is the natural log of 1 half plus 1. Or we could just say the natural log of 3 halves. So one point of inflection occurs at negative square root of 1 half comma natural log of 3 halves and then we need to evaluate for our other point of inflection at positive square root of 1 half which is also um, natural log of now positive square root of 1 half squared plus 1 which is the natural log of 1 half plus 1 or more simply the natural log of 3 halves. So our second point of inflection is the square root of 1 half and the natural log of 3 halves. 
So that uh, concludes the summary of the behavior that we were interested in. I hope this is helpful.